Hey guys, so BleemSync 1.0.1 has officially released. So today what we're gonna do is take a look at all the new features of the build. I'm gonna show you guys how to update your existing build, including all the optional packages, and then we're gonna test it out. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, guys, so it is here. The 1.0.1 release has come upon us today. And uh, what I'm gonna do really quickly is just kind of go over the update uh, in terms of the new features that they've implemented. Now there's a ton of new things that they've done. A lot of them are very low level. Um, a lot of things that you probably won't notice upon running, but they are in the uh, in the back end coding. So I'm not going to touch base on that. What I'm going to do mostly is talk about the things that you guys will notice. Uh, things that when you turn on that console, when you guys start playing around with it, the things that you guys are going to notice are different right away. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at, and this is not something you guys will notice unless you're in Japan or China, but uh, Japanese and Chinese systems are now supported. So the uh, development team is mostly located within North America or in Europe, so they haven't really uh, messed around with the Japanese consoles or the Chinese consoles. But uh, from my understanding, it looks as though those are now functioning and we can now hack those consoles as well. Additionally, this is one that I've been waiting for quite for quite some time the extended controller support So we've had some good luck with the uh, with the retro arc build where we could run ps4 controllers ps3 controllers um, We could plug in other third-party controllers and they were they were working I would say maybe 60 70 percent of the controllers you would try were working um, But now they've gone ahead and they've expanded the controller driver support So now we've got access to the Xbox drivers. We've got access to Steam controller drivers we've got access to a bunch more things so now we've got a lot more um, options with the controllers that we're going to be using for our retro arc build which is awesome uh, i know i've said in the previous uh, videos that i've made that i was looking forward to being able to use my xbox uh, one controller and it looks as though now i'm going to be able to so i'm very excited about that uh, I'm, I'm super super stoked about that one thing that they do want to mention is clearly not everything's perfect so there's there's absolutely no way that this development team can absolutely test every single type of controller. As you guys know, if we're using uh, Xbox controllers as an example, they have different versions of Xbox controllers. They've got different styles of Xbox controllers, so they clearly can't test every single different version of that controller. But from what they've tested, it does seem to be working well. So keep in mind that not all controllers are guaranteed to work. We've just knocked out a good majority of them. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at is uh, reworked optimized RetroArch 1.7.6 with ozone support. So this is actually really cool. What you guys are going to notice when you load up RetroArch is that it's got a completely new look. Um, we've bumped ourselves up from 1.7.5. Uh, now we're running 1.7.6, which I believe is uh, a substantially better version of RetroArch. The other big thing that they are talking about here is that uh, they've set it up so that way if you have a previous configuration, it's not going to get overwritten. So if you've got something set up, you've got playlists, you've got uh, configurations with controllers, you've got all that sort of thing uh, pre-set up from your previous build, you don't have to worry about losing it. Uh, one thing that you will likely lose though is if you've changed the themes, when you go through and you do the update, the theme will be reset. So you'll have to re either reload that theme or you'll have to reset that theme to the one that you wanted. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about here is called uh, new dynamic memory optimization and tuning. So this is pretty good. What it will essentially happen is, uh, as I'm sure lots of you guys have noticed, you'll often have your games crash uh, or you'll end up having your system crash or there's, there's performance issues, a ton of things that was happening uh, because the memory inside the console wasn't being allocated properly. It looks as though the developers have gone through and they have optimized things, uh, they've tuned it, and you should have substantially less issues with your console either corrupting, um, for example, the game corrupting and crashing, or going to a black screen and not rebooting properly, all of those things uh, will be greatly improved and they will happen substantially less often. So in general, what we're looking at is a better emulation experience. So that is a really cool feature too. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about here, they're putting it on as a new feature, but this is actually available in BleemSync 1.0. 
So there's another hack going around called Retroboot, and I think it's running 0.4.1 or something like that. And essentially what it is, is it's just a straight bypass. There is no longer a Bleem Sync UI, or there's no Auto Bleem UI, or there's no other UI for the PlayStation carousel, like the PS Classic carousel that you would have. It just went directly into RetroArch. Um, a lot of people seem to like that. What you were getting, and the reason I didn't make a video about that is because essentially all you're doing is just popping in a USB drive and you're loading directly into RetroArch. Uh, this feature was always available on BleemSync 1.0, but they are just going to showcase it because a lot of people didn't know that it was an option. Um, you can actually just go ahead into the system UI. You can hit a little check mark, and what will happen is it will no longer take you to the boot menu. It'll just boot you straight into RetroArch. Now, clearly, people who want access to BleemSync um, that's not going to be a benefit to you because then you lose that option. But for those who are strictly using RetroArch on their PlayStation Classic and they don't want the nonsense of having to go to a boot menu or to even have the option to access the um, the carousel with the, the BleemSync UI, then you can set that there. So that's pretty much it in terms of the uh, new major features that you guys are going to notice directly from popping in your USB and turning it on. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the installation process. So I'm just going to switch over to that now. And now that we're on the page that I'm going to leave in the description down below, this is where you're going to be able to download the latest update. One major thing that they've done now, and a lot of people had a lot of problems with this previously, was the fact that with BleemSync 1.0, it would install a small payload onto your PlayStation Classic, and there were people that hated that idea. They did not want anything changing on their console. They didn't like the idea of adding any coding or any files to the system itself, and they felt because there wasn't at the time any way to remove those files that they wanted to stay away from BleemSync 1.0. I can say right now, I've already gone through this. Uh, they've got an in uninstall protocol for individuals who don't want that. So there are some people who installed BleemSync 1.0. They were really upset that there was a payload installation on the actual console hardware. Um, you can uninstall it now. So all you would need to do is scroll down and it says how to uninstall BleemSync 1.0. And then it's got instructions here. You have to download the uninstall image. Then you're going to pop it onto your uh, USB drive. You're going to pump it into the system and you're going to turn it on and it's going to uninstall. It's really simple. They've left you six super easy steps if that's a decision that you want to make. Um, personally, I don't have a problem with uh, the additional information stored on my PlayStation Classic. Now that there is uninstall system, that's great, but uh, I've never really felt super attached to my system in the sense that I had a problem with modifying the internal coding. Now, th that opinion may not be popular. A lot of people may not agree with that. Just in my case, it doesn't bother me. But for those who had those concerns, the developers have worked really hard to make sure that that, uh, that, that is corrected. So now we're just gonna scroll on down to where it says to download. So as you can see here, uh, there's more than just one file that you can download. There's a BleemSync 1.0.1 download and that's going to install uh, the new version of BleemSync as well as the updated version of RetroArch. The other options, if you look below, you've got add-on packs. So there's a BleemSync 1.0.1 RetroArch only add-on. There is a RetroArch cheat pack add-on and then there's an overlay pack add-on. So from my understanding, the RetroArch only add-on is going to be leaving BleemSync 1.0 the way it is and it's going to give you the option to upgrade your RetroArch build from the 1.7.5 to the 1.7.6. The cheat pack package there, that is just going to give you access to a bunch of cheat codes that you can load into the cheats uh, folder within your RetroArch build. And then the last one is overlay packs. So if you watched my video with the AutoBleam installation uh, and how to install RetroArch on AutoBleam, uh, you'll notice that on the screen when I was playing, uh, I think I was playing Power Rangers for Super Nintendo, that I had an overlay on the screen that filled up the black space uh, with a static image. So that is what the overlay pack is going to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install the BleemSync 1.0.1 entire build with RetroArch and the BleemSync build. I'm going to download the cheat pack and show you guys where to put that. And I'm gonna download the overlay pack and show you guys where to put the overlay pack. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna download those files right to my desktop and I'm gonna fast forward 
just uh, just so that way you guys aren't having to wait for it. Okay, so now that those files are downloaded, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, minimize my window because we no longer need our web browser. And as you can see, I've got one folder here, which is my overlay. I've got uh, another zip here, which is my cheat pack, and I've got my uh, BleemSync 1.0.1 build. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and extract my BleemSync build. Perfect, so now that's there. I'm also going to extract my cheats and I'm gonna go ahead and extract my overlay package as well. Okay, so now that those are done, I'm just gonna move them over so that way we've got them side by side. There's my cheat pack, and there's my overlay pack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up the BleemSync 1.0.1, and as you can see in here, all we have is a BleemSync folder and a payload folder. So I'm gonna drag this over to the side. Now I'm, I've got my uh, USB drive plugged in with my uh, BleemSync 1.0 build. I need to open that up. So I've got that right here and I'm going to set it off to the side. Now all we need to do is just copy and paste everything over. So now it's going to ask us if we want to replace. We have 1968 files with the same names. We're going to go ahead and replace all the files in the destination. And really quickly before we're done with this BleemSync 1.0.1 folder, what I want to do is I want to delete my previous configuration to make sure that I get the new Ozone system, menu system up. So on my USB drive, what I need to do is I need to double click on BleemSync, OPT, RetroArch.config, RetroArch again, and then right here, this RetroArch.cfg file, we just need to go ahead and remove that from my, uh, from my build. And now we can go back to the root of our drive. Okay, perfect, so now that that's transferred over, I can go ahead and close this BleemSync 1.0.1 folder. And next I'm going to open up the uh, overlays folder. And I'm just gonna drag this over here. And if we open up BleemSync, open up OPT, open up RetroArch, open up .config, open up RetroArch again, and then overlay. So you can see that that's all in there. When you open up the overlay folders, you've got borders, you've got effects, you've got game pads, you've got iPad, you've got keyboards, you've got all of these other uh, border features. What we need to do is we simply just need to click this BleemSync folder and drag it over as well. Perfect, so now that's done, we can close that. And next we're just gonna do the same thing with our cheats folder. So you've got a BleemSync folder in here. And if you just, like I said, if you double click on everything and take it through, it'll end up taking you to a RetroArch and then a cheats folder. So we're just gonna jump right on back to the beginning. We're gonna take this folder and we're just gonna copy it and paste it over. All right guys, so now that that is finally done, I will say that that cheat pack takes a very long time to transfer over. And the reason for that is not because it's a big file, I think it's only about 45 megabytes, but because it is full of so many different files. So it takes time to just transfer them one by one. Um, but now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and close that off. And, and you're done, you're, you're almost done I should say. You're done with transferring everything you need onto your USB drive. Next what we need to do is we need to take our USB drive, pop it into our PlayStation Classic, but make sure you've got the power cord unplugged and the HDMI unplugged um, because what we're going to need to do is put the USB drive in, uh, plug everything else in in terms of the power in the USB, turn it on, and it's going to further install additional information onto your PlayStation Classic. And when that's done, just like with BleemSync 1.0, it is going to, I believe, flash an amber light, and then it's going to restart your console, and then you're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my PlayStation Classic, and I'm gonna show you guys that part as well. And then going from there, we're gonna jump on to the PlayStation Classic. All right, guys, as you can see here, I've got my PlayStation Classic with nothing connected other than player one controller. I'm gonna take my USB stick and I'm gonna pop it into the second controller port. And now I'm gonna wait a couple seconds and I'm gonna grab my HDMI cable. I'm gonna pop that into the back. Now I'm gonna grab my power cord and I'm gonna pop my power cord into the console and I'm gonna wait for my amber light to turn on. Once the amber light turns on, we're gonna see that my USB stick recognized it as well, and we're gonna press the power button to turn it on. 
Once we press this button, it's going to install a script on our PlayStation Classic, and when it's complete, you're going to see an on-screen notification that it has completed and that it will restart in about five seconds. This is what it looks like. Once it's done installing, your PlayStation Classic will start flashing red, and that'll indicate that it is completed and it'll, it'll restart itself in about five or so seconds. Once it has completely turned off, the amber light will turn back on, and then you can press the power button again to turn your console back on to finish the installation of the hack. All right, guys, so here we are on the boot menu of our PlayStation Classic. Another really cool feature that they've implemented on uh, on this build is that on the, the physical buttons on your PlayStation Classic, if you press the reset button, it'll actually switch between the two different options on your boot menu. So right now I'm physically pressing the reset button and it's bouncing back and forth. Uh, the next thing that you can do is if you want to enter in on one of them, you can press the open button and it should open up that application. There we go. So I pressed the open button and it booted up uh, RetroArch. So the reason why I selected RetroArch is because the majority of uh, the changes are have happened right in RetroArch. That's what you're going to visually notice. And right away, once we load it up, we've got a completely different layout. We've got a completely different menu. So you can see here, we've got uh, now all of our menu on the left-hand side. Our column is on the left-hand side. And... Um, Everything is just below. So all our playlists are underneath of the import content. So you can see I've got my Atari 2600 arcade games. Uh, I've got some MAME in there. We've got uh, our Turbo Graphics, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64, NES, Super NES, uh, the internal games from the PlayStation Classic, Game Gear, and then my Sega Mega Drive. Uh, what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm just going to boot up one of the games. Uh, I'll probably throw on a Super Nintendo game. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to, um, let's do a link to the past and we're going to run it on the SNES 9X core. Okay. And we're going to run it. And right away, you're going to notice that the game runs substantially quicker. And right away, we've also got our uh, overlay set. So we've got uh, not just static black bars on the side. Now we've actually got a little bit of some graphics there. So that is, uh, that is really cool. Let's see how the game plays. So I'm just going to dump my name in here really quickly. Oh, well, that's not my name. I apparently can't spell today. There we go, Steve. Let's try that. Yeah, the game definitely seems to be running really nicely, nice and smoothly. But yeah, so that's uh, that's the new build. That's how you get uh, Bleemsync 1.0.1 on your PlayStation Classic, and that's how you update RetroArch for it. So uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thumbs up to the video. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.